filtering helps keep work organized and productive. In this latest edition of Tech Talks, we'll explain the content filtering and web filtering options on the RV340 series router, next. Content filtering enables us to restrict access to clients from certain designated and unwanted websites. We can block access to websites based on domain names or keywords. To configure content filtering, we'll first go to the Security tab. Once we're logged into the router, we'll select the Content Filtering option. To enable content filtering, we'll select the checkbox, Enable Content Filtering, and click Apply. We're given the option to block matching URLs or allow only matching URLs. We can add the domain name and keywords accordingly. After entering the domain name and keywords, we're able to schedule when the filtering takes place. It can be filtered anytime, during business hours, during the evening, or probable work hours. To configure and define these specific hours, we'll navigate to the system configuration and select the schedules option. Here, we can see the details of our default schedule and edit them. When we click apply, it will take effect immediately. We've now configured content filtering on a Cisco RV340 series router. Web filtering enables business efficiency and security while connecting to the internet. This is through internet access policies and devices and internet applications that help ensure performance and security. Web filtering is cloud-based, so it supports more than 80 categories and more than 450 million classified domains. Pretty impressive, right? And for the first 90 days of use, web filtering can be tried at no cost. To configure web filtering, we'll navigate to the Security tab and select the Web Filtering option. After we've enabled content filtering, we'll get a notification that we cannot enable content filter and web filtering simultaneously. So, by enabling web filtering, content filtering will be turned off. Using the URL lookup gives us information on the website's category, its reputation, and its recognition status. We're also able to include a custom message when someone does visit the blocked page. Next, we'll add web filtering policies. We'll click Add, give it a name, add its description, select the Enable checkbox, and click the Edit button for category details. Here, we can define the filtering level as high, moderate, low, or custom. Then, we can choose whether we would like to block certain groups and further filter them with any other categories. After going through the categories and deciding which to block or allow, we will click the Apply button. Next, we'll scroll down to the Web Reputation option. Here, we can select any particular IP group we want to block. In Content Filtering, we don't have the option to simply block users based on any IP group, but it is applicable for LAN users. We can maintain any exception list by clicking Edit. If we'd like to maintain some of the sites, or if we've blocked a category but would like to include some URLs, we can enter those in the whitelist. Similarly, if we'd like to completely block a website, even if it doesn't fall into our filtering, we can add it to the blacklist. We can even exclude some users from filtering through the exclusion list. We'll just add their IP addresses, and we're good to go. Thanks for taking the time to learn all about content filtering and web filtering in Cisco RV340 series routers. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.